Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Trevor Pope. Thank you for joining me for another episode of In the Word. Uh, today, I want to pose a question, and that question is Can God do the impossible? Can God do the impossible? And I want to come out of uh, Mark 10 because. Uh, you know, in Mark 10, we will find the answer to that. And I'm sure some of you say, well, I already know the answer to that. Uh, but I wanted to read Mark 10. But I also want to pose uh, another question, you know, um, out of uh, what we're getting ready to read. So uh, Mark 10. Um, starting at the 17th verse, we're not going to read starting there, but uh, this is where the story begins and it deals with the rich man. A lot of you may know this story. He came to Jesus and said, listen, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus breaks everything down to him, uh, what he needs to do. And he says, listen, I've done all of those things uh, from my youth. And Jesus says to him, listen, there's one more thing that you need to do then. He says, you need to go sell all you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. And, and the Bible says before Jesus told him that, um, he, you know, it let us know that he looked on him with compassion and he loved him. So what he was getting ready to tell him was in love. And, you know, that's how we should be always uh, spreading the word or preaching is in love. But the rich man, you know, it was hard for him to receive. And he walked away because he had great possessions. And uh, as he walks away, Jesus and his disciples begin to have a conversation. And that's where I want to pick it up from. It says, uh, verse 22, it says, this is Mark 10 and 22. It says, and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? He says, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again. Now Jesus is getting ready to clarify what he just said. He says, and saith unto them, children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. That's very important. He said, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? And if you go back to our last video, I talked about uh, the love of money. And I, I talked about how the Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil, but the love of it, the worship of it. I and mean, when you worship it, you will put your trust in it. So Jesus clarifies, he says, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Verse 25, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure. They, they're like amazed at what Jesus is saying. And uh, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Jesus looking upon them saith, with men it is impossible. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. So there we have our answer. Uh, can God do the impossible? Can he do anything possible? Yes, he can. But the question I want to raise out of that, um, and that I think is very important that we talk about is, yes, he can do the impossible, but will he do it? And I really wanted to touch on that for a brief second, because um, a lot of times, because we know that God can do the impossible, he can do anything, he can make a way out of no way. All of the different sayings that we have about God, we know that he is just so awesome. But I think one thing that we sometimes don't talk about and we don't be real about is even though he can, he doesn't always do so. Even though he can, that doesn't mean he's going to do it. And, um, you know, what you see, especially a lot of times with preachers, I think um, you have a lot of preachers out here that get, uh, um, you know, they get over on the people because of that saying, because, you know, they will have you give and say, listen, don't oh, just trust God. He can do the impossible. He can, he can multiply this seed a thousand times and blah, blah, blah. Yes, he can. But the question is, will he? Because a lot of times, a lot of these scriptures and a lot of these things that's being said is being taken out of context. And that's where we have to, you know, sometimes just really sit and 
meditate on the word and pray and talk to God about a lot of the things that we're hearing. Because a lot of times these are things that God didn't say that he was going to do or that he was willing to do. Am I saying that there are things that uh, we are believing God for that he's not going to do? Not at all. Am I saying that we should no longer have faith and trust that God can do the impossible, heal somebody, bring finances our way, save a loved one? Not at all. But what I am saying is that we have to remember that this is all according to God's will. That's why when we pray, we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy, your will be done. Amen. So we have to understand that all of these things that we're praying and trusting God for all of the things that's being said to us that God can do and uh, things of that nature, we have to remember it's still all according to the will of God. That's why I love Jesus when he was in the garden and he was getting ready to be crucified. He was getting ready to be taken. He said, you know, uh, if it's possible, please take this cup away from me. He said, but he, but he turned around and said, nevertheless, however, not my will be done, but thy will. So I just want to encourage you guys, listen, you know, sometimes we're in a rut, we're sad because there's certain things that are not happening in our lives. And sometimes it's just because God, it could be never, or it could be just not at this time. Those are things that he is not willing to do. And these are the things that we need to pray about. It's very important that we understand what God's will is for our life. And the only way we can understand that and get that is by talking to the Lord through prayer, reading his word, hearing his words, and, and, and him uh, revealing through his Holy Spirit what it is he's trying to say to us. And I think then we would, you know, we'll be able to move through life a lot more smoothly because we have a lot of depression. We have a lot of people that are down and sad because there's so many things being thrown out there. Uh, you know, God wants to do this for you. God wants to do that. And sometimes it's not always God saying these things. So I just wanted to encourage you guys. Yes, God can do the impossible. But I wanted to also be real with you as someone who loves you as a as a teacher of the gospel, as a brother in Christ. That that does not mean he's always going to do it. So just keep that in mind. Keep praying. Stay before the Lord. Keep the faith. Keep trusting. Keep asking. But remember, it's not according to our will, guys. Guys, know that I love you. Lord willing, I will catch you on the next episode of End the Word. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate all of your prayers, all of the comments, all of the encouragement that I get from you guys on Facebook and here on YouTube. Uh, and don't forget to come over to the Facebook page and like us on Facebook.com slash in the word seven. Uh, come and join us over there. You know, we post up videos there and scriptures and different things of that nature. But guys, I love you. Uh, Jesus loves you. And, you know, and this is why we do this. This is why we just sit and talk plainly with you guys, because we we, we want to navigate this journey, you know, in, 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 in a focused way, you know, in a sound mind, not just all over the place because we got so many people trying to get over on us and tell us anything and they're using God to do it. Uh, yo, God is going to do the impossible. He's going to do it. Yes, we know that he can and we pray that he does some of these things, but if he does not, nevertheless, we still going to walk with him. We're not going to walk away. We're not going to be discouraged. We're not going to feel like God let us down. We're going to trust him through this process and on this journey. Guys, I love you. Until the next time, shalom.